Escobar was there. He was a human body taking up space. A, I wrote a black hole of charisma in the sense that I was afraid that if she got too close to him, she'd be sucked into his navel, never to return. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Billy's Wrestling Inside of Video Game Reviews. That last comment was courtesy of the Figure Four Daily Pro Wrestling News Podcast, the Brian and Vinny Smith Show. Uh, having a little funny comment about Aaron Escobar and Vicky Guerrero is a celebration after Vicky Guerrero was named the consultant of SmackDown. But this is not the SmackDown show, but it was just something funny I had off of podcasts. I found you addiction as of late listening to wrestling podcasts on my iPhone. And um, I f- figured that was like a funny little segment I'd like to share with everybody. But uh, today is Wednesday, November 25th, 2009. One more, the eve of Thanksgiving Day. One more day until my one of my favorite holidays. Where I get to gorge myself and not feel bad for it. Take it any way you want, folks, but that's my opinion about it. Thanksgiving is a day where everybody can just gorge themselves on whatever they want and not feel bad about it. Alright? Well, like I said... Today is Wednesday. That means it is time for the ECW Inside of the Week. Why I did that, I don't know. Maybe I'm hopped up on too much caffeine. Who knows? Or maybe I'm just happy that it's one more day until Thanksgiving. And some really good food. Well, the, the show started off with another Shelton Benjamin, Zach Douche, Idiot Douche Rider match. And uh, it started to turn it into the Morrison... Ziggler uh, matches of of uh, SmackDown is it's repetitious. You know we've seen it so many times. We just want it to be over for God's sakes. Now, albeit the match was pretty good. You know Benjamin came out on top and uh, became the number one contender for the ECW title. It's about time that he got uh, uh, a contenders match for a major title. Now, what ticked me off a little bit is that they, a lot of people did not consider, do not consider the ECW Championship to be a major title in the WWE. I find that personally offensive. Okay, because the ECW title has a lot of history behind it. I'll be in, it's a new looking title, but the ECW Championship has been around for quite some time, since the, the 90s. A lot, of, a lot of great wrestlers have held, have held that title. Raven, Tommy Dreamer, Terry Funk. I mean, come on. Not... ECW is kind of ECW is kind of a uh, written off ECW and uh, it, it just you know frustrates me that they have taken a great franchise like ECW and they've thrown it down the tubes. You know, not, and, uh, but uh, and I got that out of my system. Uh, Benjamin winning the match last night, he becomes the number one contender and. Uh, Christian comes out to confront him and says, you know, for the past two pay-per-views, the ECW title has been overlooked, and uh, he is correct in that statement. The last two pay-per-views, the ECW title has been overlooked. I mean, Christian was part of a Survivor Series tag team match. Why was not the, why was the title not defended? And in bragging rights, the e- ECW was not represented. This was ma- basically more of Raw versus SmackDown. Uh, ECW wasn't even considered to be in the fight. And, uh, so I find that kind of wrong, you know, bagging rights. Why did, why wasn't ECW involved? I mean, ECW is being the third brand and everything. But uh, Christian came out. He said he wanted to steal the show at TLC and uh, make the match a ladder match. Now, for all of you who have seen Christian and Shelton Benjamin in ladder matches before, they have put on some spectacular shows, especially with uh, Shelton Benjamin's history in the Money in the Bank ladder match. You know, Christian's uh, history in Money in the Bank ladder matches, and ladder matches in general, this might end up being a breakthrough match for ECW. A chance for ECW to start breaking out on its own and gaining more t- airtime and gaining more wrestlers to come to ECW and have more time. Because I've said it for the longest time, folks. And for those of you who have followed me on my website before, I've said it time and time again, uh, time in and time out. They need more wrestlers on ECW. They need an extra hour, and they need it to be on a different channel than sci-fi. 
albeit they've been with Sci-Fi for the past two years, the, the reason they started on Sci-Fi is because they wanted ECW to have like some Sci-Fi wrestlers. I mean, if you think back, they had the zombie, who was just basically a jobber for the same man. And we had Kevin Thorne in uh, April, who I'd miss a whole lot. And, uh, you know, with the vampires. <laughs> and, uh, they were supposed to have, like, a, a whole vampire cult and have Gangrel come back and whatnot, but that didn't happen. So, they need to get more wrestlers. They need to put it on a different channel and get an extra hour to have ECW be an even viable contender in, these, in this brand warfare. But, speaking of viable wrestlers, Vance Archer continues his dominance on ECW. Now, for those of you who have not jumped on the Van Archer bandwagon, what the hell are you waiting for? Vance Archer is just oozing talent out of his body. He has so much talent and in-ring ability in the, in the ring. Why are you people out there booing him? Why? Is it because he's more talented than you? Is, is it the fact that he can perform better than you? Or maybe it's the fact that he's better than you. You people have no reason to boo Vance Archer. And I'll say it right now. Within six months' time, they will have a title on Vance Archer. Whether it's the ECW title, Intercontinental title, United States title, or any title in the WWE. They will have a title on him. Okay? So jump on the Archer bandwagon. Archer is the future of the WWE, and I am ashamed and appalled at every one of you out there who watches my show who boo Archer in the ring. But, uh, Matt Hardy was on the Abraham Washington show. Who the hell thought up this concept? Now, I do realize that Abraham Washington was from Florida Championship Wrestling, and, uh, I don't know what little spiel he did because I'm not from Florida. I'm from Louisiana. Hello. Wee! And, uh, I d don't understand this whole talk show bit. I mean, uh, for those of you who remember Eric Bischoff back in WCW when uh, Hogan was doing that whole thing with Jay Leno. I'll talk about that on another show. Maybe a classic show I'll come up with or something. But, uh, now he did his own little spiel as a talk show and where he copied Jay Leno's, Jay Leno's jokes, and, uh, that failed miserably. And, uh, so, uh, now they have Abraham Washington almost trying to do the same thing, except he's coming up with his own horrible jokes. They have Tony Atlas laughing. <laughs> Tony Atlas sounds like he's been smoking too much crack. Tony Atlas, they need to do something with Tony Atlas instead of having him stand there like a laughing jackass. Laughing at every little thing. You can say, you say the word shoehorn him. You go. Ah, 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 ah. But I tell you what was funny last night when he scared the shit out of Abraham Washington. That the, that was funny. That was funny when he scared the shit out of Abraham Washington, and Washington was like, "You didn't scare me, dude. I'm just grabbing my chest for no apparent reason." And uh, but Matt Hardy did talk about him being on scare tactics again and. Uh, but we look forward to that in uh, next week on uh, Matt Hardy to be on Scare Tactics next week on Sci-Fi, and and uh, I'll be watching it and I'll be uh, uh, telling you guys about it on here, right here on this very show. <laughs> I love to see you on the show, by the way. And uh, the main event last night was Yoshi Tatsu versus William Regal. Now Yoshi Tatsu, that is another man that is oozing talent and great in-ring ability, and he's going to be a future superstar for the WWE. Yoshitatsu. He had a wonderful match with Christian a few weeks ago for the ECW title, and I thought he did great. But uh, Yoshitatsu ended up getting the win over William Regal because uh, Kozlov did a little pass interference on uh, Tatsu, and uh, William Regal got pissed and wanted to know who did it, and uh, Kozlov just stood there and went, You did it. And he pointed towards Big Zeke, Ezekiel Jackson, and uh, kind of a bad mistake, because uh, uh, Ezekiel Jackson planted him with that rock bottom of his, and then he did the same thing to William Regal, and that's pretty much how the show ended. So, uh, all, all in all, it was a pretty good ECW. I would give it like a, a three and a half stars, you know, better than average. Well, that's it for today. Tune in tomorrow for Billy's Wrestling Insight and Video Game Reviews. Bye!